What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So as you know, we like to look at the weirdest of things and there's nothing weirder in the GPU space than the AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT. Now we managed to get our hands on one of these. It was a card released in 2022 by AMD as an option for those budget gamers during the GPU crisis. But it instantly received criticism from gamers and reviewers alike. But were those criticisms justified? Let's find out. So the model we managed to pick up was the Sapphire Pulse model and we picked it up at a pretty decent price. As the card goes it was released by AMD as a bit of a kneecapped card and we'll go into some of the negatives. Firstly you can tell that they actually didn't spend a lot of money on things like packaging, they really did cut down. This is one of the first graphics cards that I've purchased in a while which actually comes as it was produced about five to six years ago. Inside the packaging there is basically just a cardboard inlay with a bit of sponge padding and a kind of a spongy bag with the card in it. But the card itself inside is not that bad. This one being the Sapphire Pulse model is a twin fan system and it's actually pretty quiet. But obviously it does have its drawbacks. AMD in their great wisdom decided to do quite a few things wrong with it. Firstly, they only gave it four gigabytes of RAM, which you could probably consider as a budget option. It was probably not so bad, but this along with the fact that they only went for a four times PCI bus really didn't help the card's performance at all. Along with that as well, they also made it a PCI Gen 4 card, which means if you're gonna be installing it in a PCI Gen 3, you're gonna have a limitation on how much power it's got. And then to top it all off, they also removed some of the codecs. So if you're one of those budget gamers that wants to do a bit of streaming and recording, you're out of luck with this card, which is a bit of a shame because it means that AMD are really limiting the budget market and it's not gonna help them get into it at all. But there are some upsides to this card. Obviously it is a 6000 series card, so you're gonna get the luxury of being able to use RSR and FSR technology, which hopefully should give it a bit of a boost going forward. Even though it's only got four gigabytes of RAM, that is pretty much the minimum you need for gaming at the moment, so that's not as bad. And of course, when you come to upgrade your platform and you do go to PCI Gen 4, you're gonna get an instant upgrade in GPU as well. Then there is the price. The price is not good at all. AMD released this as a, with an MSRP of just under £200, which is actually a roughly the price of an RX 470 back in the day. And weirdly enough, they actually compared it to a graphics card very similar in their official benchmarks, which wasn't giving people much hope to begin with. But obviously you're here to see how it performs and we're really interested in that too. So we decided to drop it into our testing machine and see how it would do. Now our testing machine does use a PCI Gen 3 system because it's on a 10th gen Intel, so it's gonna give you the worst case scenario, but we actually felt that that was more in line with the people that were probably going to buy this. We also tested it with our normal targets, so we were trying to aim for 1080p 60fps, and we used some of the most demanding games that we got, so let's take a look.
But as you can tell from those benchmarks, it didn't perform too badly. In actual fact, the performance you were getting when running in a Generation 3 system was pretty much similar to something like an RX 470 or an RX 570, which unfortunately is now a five-year-old card. So you're actually going to be buying something that will perform just like a five-year-old card for pretty much the same price as they were new. Now, it's quite unfortunate, but we decided to see what would it actually play like when you actually threw it at some esports. So we decided to load up one of the most demanding, well, currently demanding esports titles, which is Fortnite, and to see what kind of experience we got. Now, obviously, we set this to a 1080p high settings, and it didn't perform that badly when it comes to frames per second, but there were issues in a lot of micro stuttering. No matter what we did with the settings, it actually pretty much did the same all the way through. And without actually dropping the resolution, which you really wouldn't want to do with a brand new card, it was pretty much like that throughout until we got this. We suddenly got an error which actually suggested the latest drivers for this card had issues with Fortnite. So we decided to go back to the drivers it was recommending, which was quite a way back, and get that loaded up. So we run a bit of a DDU on the system to make sure everything was cleaned down, and then we reinstalled the old 22.2.2 driver set. Unfortunately, that didn't make a blind bit of difference. It actually still had a lot of micro stuttering all the way through and actually became unplayable in many circumstances, which was actually really bad for this card. Now, if it can't play Fortnite without a bit of stuttering, what can you actually play with something like this? Clearly, if you're building a new system, it probably makes sense to get something like this because you are going to be running on a PCI Gen 4. And I believe that the actual micro stuttering problems that we had were down to the memory. It just couldn't read the memory fast enough, particularly when that game was had a lot of things on the screen. But for anybody that's actually trying to upgrade an older system, you probably want to try and avoid. There are a lot of different options out there now on the secondhand market, which are much, much cheaper than this. Now, these, again, are still actually running at about £200. This particular model we could find for £240, which was actually a bit of an insane pricing for it. But we actually didn't pay that at all. We actually managed to pick this up for just £90. And I think that's actually a more fairer price for this card. But that's enough about what we think about it. Let us know what you think about this card in the comments below. Did AMD make a big mistake with this card? And did they really do over the budget gamers? Because after all, their main audience has always been the budget gamer. And this was the offering they managed to give them this time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. And also drop this video a like if you like this kind of thing. And we'll make sure that we keep it. But until the next time, we'll catch you in the next one.